Okay, these are some solar cell devices that I fabricated. I have um, four of them here that I connected wires to, and then a few others that are just pieces of silicon. The construction is pretty simple. I started with a P-type 100 orientation wafer. I grew a layer of silicon dioxide onto it, and then I masked and etched a uh, window out in that silicon dioxide. I spun a phosphoric acid solution over it as my dopant, and then I put that in a fusion furnace, I drove that in, I etched another spot in the silicon dioxide so I can connect um, the anode, and then down here you'll see that um, I have connections to an, a p-type and an n-type doped region. The reason why I'm calling these solar cells and not diodes for the purpose of this video is because if um, I were to put them on a curve tracer, they wouldn't be anything near what you'd expect to see as a diode. Most of them actually work in the reverse direction because the band gaps for them are quite screwed up. Um, for a solar cell, you want the band gap to have the highest efficiency. You want your band gap to be around one and a half electron volts, actually a little bit less than 1.5 eV. And um, to get there, um, I had to increase the dopant concentration on these quite significantly and the result of that um, increasing dopant concentration is a decrease in band gap and band gap being the difference between the valence and conduction um, bands basically and as we increase the dopant concentration the wave functions that describe the electrons in both of those regions start to overlap and kind of converge and um, that really screwed up band gap will not make way for a good diode it's actually how um, the premise that zener diodes work on and um, that, w though, um, although it doesn't work well as a diode, will give you a decent solar cell. And they're quite easy to fabricate for that exact reason. The dopant I used on this one here um, was straight up 98% um, by mass phosphoric acid. And then on these, I tried some other solutions with uh, isopropyl alcohol um, solvents. And then this one, um, I used a Filmtronics P509 commercially available dopant source. Um, I think it's 10%, which is quite a lot of phosphoric acid in it, and then they have their own proprietary solvents and whatnot, so that it can spin on easier. Um, I have light source here, um, a couple multimeters. This one um, I'm going to use for measuring voltage. I'm using this one to measure amps because I can down, go down to the microamp range on here, and we'll take a look at all those. Um, I have an undoped piece of silicon, or, or rather a p-type doped. It just doesn't have a p-n junction in it. And then um, I also have a cutaway of a TO, T03 type transistor, um, just to show you how an actual PN junction works as a solar cell even better than what I'm doing. The last thing I'm going to show you is kind of a funny solar cell. This one here um, has a little bit of a yellow tint to it, and I actually created this one by taking a P-type wafer. I didn't grow any silic silicon dioxide onto it, but I did my doping using Coca-Cola. Um, I actually use Pepsi Throwback because the third ingredient on it is phosphoric acid. And uh, I thought there might be enough of it to um, successfully dope a wafer, and there was. I chose to use the Pepsi Throwback version because it has natural sugar in it, and I thought that the new lab synthesized sh uh, like sweetener sugar molecules would get in the way of all of the diffusion and stuff. So just to eliminate that variable, I decided to go with the Throwback version of the soda. And um, I spun coated on here. I um, put it in the furnace and uh, actually created a working solar cell. And surprisingly, it works almost as well as the other ones. I have no way of actually testing this, um, but I think that the band gap um, on this one is much higher than that one and a half electron volts, and the band gap on this one, which I use the Filmtronics open for, is lower than that one and a half electron volts. Um, by quite a lot. I, I just a hypothesis. All right, let's do some testing. I have a light source here meant for a microscope, culminating lens. First up, let's measure voltages. Okay, set the volts. Actually, we'll go to millivolts. Millivolts DC. This is the first one I ever fabricated. It was the second um, semiconductor device that I ever made successfully. And ambiently, uh, in ambient light, we're getting about three and a half millivolts. As I put it into the more intense light, 
that's going up to tenth of a volt and more, hold it right up to light, almost 0.2 of a volt. And this one I fabricated with a planar method, and the rest of these, um, the anode is on the reverse side of the wafer as the cathode. This one, I did that silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide etching technique, and uh, that's how I have a PN junction all in one plane. This one here, if I remember correctly, um, I was trying a different solvent for the spin-on dopant, and this one I had pretty good success with. So yes, yeah, similar performance as far as voltage. And this one, um, I have the anode connection on the top of it and the cathode connection on the bottom of the P-type wafer. Same construction on this one, just trying some different dopant ideas. And uh, that one, yeah, about the same, a little bit, a little bit lower. This one was done with a Filmtronics dopant, pretty high concentration. I think the band gap of this one is actually closer to what it should be. Um, I have a couple other just little fragments of silicon here, if I can make connections right. Wow, yeah, it's uh, 0.4 volts, almost half a volt out of this one here. I don't remember what I was using as a dopant for this. And a couple more. And uh, this is the cutaway of a TO3, T03 transistor. Like I said, um, this is the base emitter junction I'm about to show you. And just to show you that this works as a solar cell as well. Well, any PN junction does. And uh, that's half of a volt on there. I'll give you a closer look at these in a second. Before I show you the Coca Cola solar cell, um, this is a piece of just P-type wafer, it has no N-type in it, and I'm going to show you that um, it does create a little bit of voltage, even though it doesn't actually have a PN junction, because there's still some charge carrier movement, but uh, very, very minuscule. So I'm just going to connect it on the top and bottom sides of the wafer, and you'll notice it's down to like 1 millivolt-ish, and I'll put it under the really intense light, and yeah, kind of occasionally jumps up to 10 millivolts or so. Um, some of that can also be the heat from my hand that's getting into this, and the last thing I'll show you is that yellow colored um, Coca-Cola dope wafer. The front of it, the yellow is from a uh, thin, is from thin film interference of the silicon dioxide. The back of it actually has some caramelized sugar on it, which is funny. And I kind of scraped away a nice portion of it so I can make a connection with the back side of the P-type wafer. Oops. Okay. Again, almost a quarter of a volt there. Now let's look at current consumption. So this meter can't go down to microamps, so it's kind of useless. And we're using the uh, Fruk multimeter set to microamps. All right, hopefully you can see that. Starting again with the first planar um, solar cell. This one actually works quite well as a diode as well. The curve is uh, pretty decent. It does have a really quick breakdown, however. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a microamp um, in ambient lighting. And I'll put it onto the intensified light. And that's quite a lot, actually. 200, 150 to 200 microamps um, at that quarter of a volt is not bad at all. The efficiencies of these are on the order of 1 or 2 percent. Next one, um, this one's not a planar solar cell. The anode connection's on the back of it. Again, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 microamps in ambient lighting. And then 100 or so, 110, 125 microamps. Moving on, I had a couple more of these. And uh, I was making the connections to the silicon wafers using conductive silicon epoxy. I don't have a wire. I don't have a working wire bonding machine yet. Same thing. This 
680 micrograms we just got out of that one. This is the Filmtronics one. 500, 600 microamps. Can I get them on the amperage scale? I don't think so. Yeah, no. So 600 microamps at a tenth of a volt out of this one here. Not bad. Um, this is that TO3 style transistor cutaway. 100 microamps. A fragment of a uh, wafer that I doped. 20, 30 microamps. This is just the P-type wafer that has no PN junction in it. And as we would expect, no measurable current flows. And finally, the Coca-Cola wafer. I make the connection to the back and the front. And yeah, 0.6 of a microamp. 1.5, see if I can get a better connection. It's tough with all the caramelized sugar on the back of the wafer. Yeah, just about one, one to one and a half microamp out of this one here. I guess the band gap is so large um, that photons, very few photons that hit it are of a great enough energy to get the electron movement across the depletion layer of this because the band gap is going to be so high. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned. Um, I'm probably going to be making a lot more semiconductor-related videos really soon. Thanks.